So welcome back. Another day, another book. So what's it today, Chris? Yeah, uh, I can't wait. Uh, always, always the highlight of my day. So um, today we're going to be doing book number 13. Uh, it's a book called Resisting Happiness by the author Matthew Kelly. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, give you a quick visual of the book itself um, and a quick description of the book. So this is a um, further description on the book. It's a, it's a true story about why we sabotage ourselves, feel overwhelmed, uh, set aside our dreams and lack courage to simply be ourselves and to start choosing happiness again. Um, the, uh, the reflection title is, is 10 minutes a day can change your life. And, and I'll, you know, I'll get to that in a second here, but I got a quick fun story about, um, about this book um, uh, randomly in my life. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose it. So, um, so, True. If you remember uh, that one book that we read, it was called Off Balance. Um, mm -hmm. by, it, this is the same author. Um, and uh, what uh, if if you've ever read the book, I can't imagine. Um, uh, which I know. I think I don't know Blake if you've finished this yet, but I um, I know I know True has. Um, he uh, uh, the 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 whole fix your basement portion of the book at the end when I talk about the compound effect of my my life all coming together. Um, uh, when I was over at my grandmother's house the night that she told me about her, her family, her basement story of, you know, how that, how that changed her life when she decided to fix her, 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 her basement. Um, one of the things we actually talked about that night was this, this, uh, some of the books that I'd been reading. And, um, and then she was showing me this one book that her and her book club had been reading and it was on the table. She was like, God, this has been taking it. It's been like a year. We've been going through this book forever. She was like, it seems pretty okay, but I'm just so tired of going at everybody's pace, which is another reason for the, for the anti-book club that we started, you know, uh, mm -hmm. where you can just read at your own pace and share with the world. Anyway, that book was Resisting Happiness by Matthew Kelly. So um, oh, I, okay. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I thought it was really funny. And when I, when I saw this book, uh, uh, you know, come up and some of my random, you know, like, like whatever those, those, you know, uh, algorithms are that show like, you know, books that might, you might be interested in. Mm -hmm. When I saw that Matthew Kelly was the guy that read that off balance or that wrote the off balance book that we wrote. And then it had like other books by the author. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I've heard of that book before. My grandma was reading it. I was like, I'll, I'll check it out. It'll be something to talk to her about. So that, that was actually how I found this book. Um, and it was a kind of a kind of a fun story. Yeah. So um, on with the reflection, I guess. Um, in, in the book, Resisting Happiness, the, the author, uh, Matthew Kelly, he talks about learning um, uh, when he was 16 years old. He was taught by, by this guy that, you know, a, a tip that kind of changed his life a little bit. And he, and he basically said... I mean, he was forced to, this guy told him to force yourself to reflect for 10 minutes a day and to kind of sit in prayer and sit in thought, right. Or whatever it may be, uh, for, for 10 minutes a day. And, um, this reflection, um, is about that. Um, uh, it's about his, uh, how it changed his life. And a lot of the book that, that he wrote, you know, you could see the, the, the makings of how that 10 minutes a day really did help him to connect with, with himself, with God, with whatever you want to call it, you know, in his own mind uh, and to help, you know, develop into the life that he developed into and, and to start and to stop resisting happiness, I guess, a little bit. So it made me start to think about um, how when I discovered uh, the, the whole 10 minutes a day can change your life um, in my own world. And uh, that actually happened when when we were in the NICU back with my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was like two days into the uh, after she had been born and, um, you know, I was just searching for anything and everything that I could possibly search for to keep my mind occupied, to try to stay balanced and try to stay present in the moment and to try to, you know, stay, uh, you know, just focused on her, but, but doing whatever I could to kind of, you know, keep my mind off of the fact that I could lose her at any minute kind of thing. So, um, the night before, um, this particular day, uh, a friend, a couple, um, a friend of ours, um, it was a couple, um, they dropped off, uh, a book uh, that they thought might help us. It was this book called Trusting God Day by Day by um, the author Joyce Meyer. It was a book of 365 daily reflections um, about, uh, you know, trusting God and, and, you know, and some scripture reading and followed by her thoughts. And, and it was something you could read every day and, you know, and get your mind started each morning. So um, I said, what the hell? Like, I mean, we were, I was desperate for anything, you know, these kind of things hadn't really ever been something I did in my life, I guess, at that point in time. Uh, but, you know, I took a chance and, and um, my wife and I, we sat down together and when we were in the, um, uh, when we would get home from the NICU each night and we were able to be together because we couldn't be during the pandemic. And, um, you know, we read this and, and thought about it and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, 
that was how my process and my journey of starting my 10 minutes of reflection every day um, kind of started for my own self. Um, from there, because I was reading this and I had time while I was in the NICU, I decided I wanted to, you know, and we were keeping the journal for my daughter. I decided I wanted to um, journal my thoughts about what I read. Um, so spent the first five, 10 minutes when I would get to the NICU and I would read the, the reflection. We kept the book at the NICU and, um, and then I would journal my thoughts about it. And, uh, and it was, you know, it was, it, was, it was how I kicked off my journal. It was how I kicked off my day. It was how I talked to my daughter. It was how I got my mind right going into the NICU kind of thing. And I started to really enjoy it. Um, fast forward, you know, years and, you know, multiple years later, I still do that every single morning. Um, and, uh, and along the way, and as I talk about this in my book, um, uh, I started to discover what I was actually doing, you know, for the first time in my life, you know, we're, we're the society, the world that we live in, we're just, we're just inundated with voices, you know, from all over the place. I mean, we talk about this a lot when we talk about our own, you know, just daily, you know, connects that we, we have. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, you just, you go on LinkedIn, you go on Twitter, you go on Facebook or whatever. There's always somebody out there that's just blasting a message into your face, or you go on, you know, TV or Netflix or the news or whatever. There's always somebody else who has an agenda and has a, has something that they want to shove down your throat, you know, and we're constantly being inundated by other people's thoughts into our head. And, and, and it's really can be overwhelming sometimes. Well, one of the people that we don't spend a lot of time with ourselves from what I discovered, uh, was myself. Um, and, uh, that was when I really started to connect, you know, a lot of the dots internally. It was, um, so that, that 10 minutes a day was when I started to kind of formulate a lot of thoughts on, on my, my spirituality, on learning the stuff that I was reading and learning. Um, I mean, it, it, it became, it became my way to, to journal to my daughter, it came by my, my way to journal through ideas, it, you know, came, became my way to, to, to validate or not validate what the, what the Joyce was saying in her daily reflection of trusting God day by day. And, and, you know, slowly, but surely over time, it really did change my life. So um, I echo what Matthew Kelly was saying in this book of, you know, 10 minutes a day can truly change your life. Um, you know, I encourage anybody and everybody to uh, spend some time with yourself, you know, um, whatever you want to call that, whether that's prayer, God, meditation, spirituality, just talking to yourself. I don't really care what you want to call it, what you want to label it. It's all the same goal. It's to, it's to connect with that inner voice inside of you and, um, and, and to, to get some guidance going forward and to, and to kind of check in and, and figure out what's actually going on in your own mind. So um, question that I will pose to you guys is, you know, um, well, A, I'd love to get your thoughts on the reflection and then B, you know, when was the last time you spent, you know, 10 minutes with your own thoughts or is there anything that you do every single day that's similar that, that you would echo as well? So before I, uh, I answer that question, can I ask you a, a different question? Sure. Um, what, you, what would you think would happen if you did not start on this 10 minutes of reflection through your journey in the NICU? Have you ever thought of, some, of something like that? I mean, what would you be? Who I, would you, I who don't, you, we, who I, would I you don't, looking at right now? I don't even know because I, I, I say that because I go, I'm just going to, I know you can see my screen still. So mm -hmm. this is my, this is, this is my journal from 2022 that I just recently started. Um, I, um, whatever the number is on the screen at 121, because that was a journal for my daughter. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, we can't see that part of the screen. We don't want to see the website, but. Oh, oh, sorry. So um, I'm, I'm looking at uh, today is day 521 and um, add 121 to that. So 642. Um, so it's been 642 days since I, since I didn't do that. Um, and, um, and I don't know, man, I, I don't think that we ever would have met. I don't think that, that, that this year magical learning journey would have started. I don't think I would have written the book that I wrote. I don't think I would have, you know, gone on this year magical learning journey. I don't think that I would have any idea what my core values are. I mean, like the reflection and thinking and formulating your own thoughts is important. Like you, you could spend all day long learning and, and, you know, and, and reading every book out there, but if you never take time to think about what you're learning and, and how you actually think about that, then it's, it's kind of all for not, you know? Um, I mean, it, it's, then you're just being inundated by other voices out there in the universe. And it may sound cool in theory, but when you, when you have to filter through your own mind and talk to God or talk to meditate or whatever you want to call it, like it, it changes things, you know, you, you decide whether or not you actually believe that. I don't know what that you means. I don't know what the self means. I don't, I'm not a Buddhist or something like that, but like something that you talk to yourself in your own head, like changes things. And, and, and it's important to just take some time to check in. Sometimes you have a brilliant idea. Sometimes you have no ideas. Sometimes you have 
you, you agree. Sometimes you don't like, you know, but it's important to just do the exercise and to do the work and to make it consistent and, and, and talk to God every day is what I like to call it. True. Right. I, I knew Chris before he did this. And uh, it's interesting. It is interesting to think about. I, I remember when I think a shift started happening and how you just kind of, you didn't, it's not like you changed, but like things just kind of, things changed. And I, I don't think you would have, I don't think you would have, especially the person now would definitely not like the person that you would have been. I don't think that person would have been bad, but I mean, again, it was, it was, it was driven. It was, it was, I mean, again, I remember, you know, Chris was my manager at one point. Some of the things I think he taught me back when he was my manager, before he started all this, he would probably want to punch himself in the face. <laughs> very, you know? very true. Yeah. But it, uh, what, I know you would have been very different and it wasn't a huge change that happened, but it was, a, it was kind of like an enlightenment, I guess it seemed like half it started to happen. Yeah. And I, and I attribute it to this, like, I mean, this is, this is really probably if I had to distill the essence of, of the most important thing that I do every single day, it's taking 10, 15 minutes of time to read somebody else's thoughts and then to write my own thoughts about it. And then mm -hmm. it kicks out and then, and then, and then the, the snowball is rolling from there, you know, then I spend another hour writing, you know, based off of a book that I wrote and then, then the rest of the day kicks off. And then we have these conversations and like, I mean, th these are, I, I, I like to think of it as talking to God. That's what I think of as God at this point in time, you know, like it's a, it's a mutual, it's a mutual thing, you know, um, like we are God, God is us. And, and, you know, and that's, it's inside your head. You know, you mm -hmm. have that, it's, 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 it's our, it's our, it's a superpower of ours. Like if you don't do that, I think that you're, you're wasting uh, so much, so much, so much, you know, um, time I guess, or uh, um, in, yeah, capabilities. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're wasting your, your life on earth and you are in, um, in a funny way resisting happiness. Yeah. Right, because I think in order for you to be happy, you have to do what it is that is compatible with you. Right. So to me, the only voice that is important is your voice. It's good to learn from other people, but at the same time, you have to think about what does that means to me? Right. And how do I use it to make right. me uh, have a fulfilling life, a joyful life? Um, so I agree. You know, you have to think about your, um, your own thoughts. Your, uh, what does it mean? And why does it make you behave a certain way? And do you like it? If you don't like it? Well, you're stressing out. So a lot of times, you know, we are we are com completely being drowned by these, um, you know, different saying and different self-proclaiming gurus out there that tells you, hey, you know, do this, you got to do that, and this is the way you should behave, and this and that. And that's great and all, but at the same time, you know, you have to have a balance. Right. And knowing what other people do and other people want you to do, it's good, but it's not the absolute path you need to take you have to ask yourself do i believe in it if you don't and you keep following that without knowing why you follow that path eventually you're not gonna be happy and to me it's um it's fitting to um reflect on this book in terms of resisting happiness i think happiness is something that by default you are on the flow of of happiness it just seeing things and, and they are tugging you away from that path and we are we are letting them do it so talking to yourself and reflecting on what you do you say well that is kind of what i want but at the same time i want it like slightly different and so everybody have their own path and i think um talking yourself and thinking through your thoughts thinking about the thoughts you have uh, I think give you um, a lot of insights. I think I, I think everybody should do it. You know, for for me, it's the same same thing with uh, similar to to you, Chris. Is you know, I've spent half of my life uh, trying to do what people expect me to do. They say you should do this, you should do do that, and I, I just try to live up to that expectations, up to a point where I hit a midlife crisis and say, well, why am I doing any of these? 
this doesn't make sense to me. I don't want to do it. It doesn't, it doesn't make me happy. It makes me stress out. So I, I, I too started, started to stop, listen to people and start listening to myself. And so for me, I do enjoy thinking about, you know, my life, what I do, my thoughts every day. And, you know, I, I do them um, without thinking. I mean, I, I think about my thoughts. Uh, right. on a regular basis where I've been thinking. So, and, and to me, it makes me a happier person than before. Chris, one thing, I'll, I don't know if you can even, if you can touch on it. One thing I noticed seems like when you started doing this, you're a high energy person, but I would say there almost became a little bit of a calmness that kind of came and seemed like when you started doing this or like a uh, like a sense of peace almost seemed like it, it was uh, that happened. Is that accurate? Do you feel like? Yeah. I mean, 100%. This is, this is, this is like anchor. So I, I, I don't, I'm not a, like, I, I talk a lot about this too in, in, in the book, the, I can't imagine, um, you know, the, the, the Emilio story. And then my, my story of, you know, rebuilding my, our, our city together, I guess, after it all kind of crumbled and, and what happened to us. Um, but like, I, I went to a Catholic grade school. I went to a Catholic high school. Um, you know, I grew up in a very Catholic family. I grew up in a world where I knew everything there was to know about the Bible, scriptures, God, yada, yada, yada. I I'd never had a conversation with, I don't care if you want to call it God or, or not. Like I've, I've never stopped my entire life. I, I don't, I don't know that I've ever spend any time talking to myself. Like, and, and that's really where God is. Like, I, like, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's it that's 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 our superpowers our ability to think and imagine and, and to grow and and you know it's a two-way street he's the funny thing is is god's always there like all you have to do is just stop and talk you know like i don't i don't like once again i don't want to call it god you can call it meditation you can call it you can call it just yourself i don't care like whatever you want to call it it's that, it's that voice in your own head that that you want you need to connect with and when i was when i started to connect with that and started writing down my own for me the writing was a really important part of all that of of not just thinking, but the writing forces me to really process what I'm thinking as well. So like it, it makes it a little slower and, and, and I can kind of debate with, with myself, you know, a little bit through, through mm -hmm. writing and, and it's, and, and it's not just sitting down. It's, it's a deliberate thought, you know, um, um, uh, from whatever it's I'm trying thinking to about do. thinking. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yes, it does give me, it did give me calm. It gave me, it gave me, it gave me my core values. It gave mm -hmm. me a relationship with God. It gave me, per, it allowed me to find my, my, my mission, my purpose. It allowed me to connect with, you know, with, with God and therefore connect with myself and therefore connect with, you know, you guys, like, and then whatever else we're going to connect that mission to in the future, you know, like, I mean that, so yeah, I do feel way more calm. Like, I don't, I don't worry about it's the end of our fiscal year right now at Salesforce, right? You know, it's a stressful time of the year. I, I don't care. Like I'm not, and I don't mean that in like a, I don't care about like my job or something like that. I mean, like it doesn't, well, it's it not doesn't the only matter. Thing. It's right. not the most, <laughs> the top most important thing, you know? So right. when, once you are thinking about yourself and reflecting your thoughts, you tend to become more content with yourself. Right. When you're content with yourself, you're not fearful of, oh, uh, I don't want to lose this. I don't want to, um this that or that to happen right and so you're not stressed out or worry about something that is in the future that never happens oh i need to close the quarters or i need to um you know make sure i this do this and i make sure i do that and so when when you have the ability to think about what you think about uh those things become secondary so it isn't i mean it's it's still it's still on your radar and you're still wanting to do that right but you tell yourself that's not the worst thing right the worst thing is something else uh you know the most important thing is something else yeah i mean um I, and and that's the your your happiness your family whatever your core values are you place that above everything else and so having that anchors you the the worry isn't gonna affect you and influence you as much Agreed. I think it's really good that you said it, you, you mentioned you, you take a second to almost debate with yourself because I think a lot of times we don't do that. And I think the initial, our initial reaction thought about things um, are oftentimes what we want to tell ourselves and we don't take the time to kind of 
debate with ourselves and sometimes come to find the true answer. Um, so I think that's when I found myself doing that, I think I, I learned a lot about myself because I think my initial thought reaction to myself, how I viewed myself, whatever it might be, um, I don't think was very accurate. And then I started to question that and kind of debate it. And I think then finally I kind of got to the truth of, of some things. So yeah, I think it's I think it's good to almost kind of question and debate yours, take the time to do that uh, to you, yourself sometimes. I don't yeah. think very much to do. Yeah, because the thing is when when we're younger, they, people ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? You think about it. But does anyone ask you, Blake, what do you want to do now? No one does it. So you never think about it. It's like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do these. I I need to do these. No one say, oh, I get to do this and get to do that. I want to do this. Right? They don't. They say, I have to. No one asks you. So you have to ask yourself, what do you want to be? Our, our thoughts are memes at this point in time. There are social memes that just get thrown into our face all day long on, on you know, whatever we pop onto and, and, and we're like, oh yeah, that's a good thought. And then we go on back to our day. We don't even, we, like, we don't even, I don't even know that we even We, we don't even get to, like, you know, get to like, decide if that's a good thought or not. We can <laughs> say, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a guru of this and, you know, you, you should uh, rise, grind and repeat, you know, and the people will say, oh yeah, we should do that, you know, so, well, did you think about it before you start, you know, celebrating something that people say that, you know, may make sense at first? You don't think about it. You don't let it, you know, marinate into your thoughts and you don't think about it. You just take it and then you go out there and you regurgitate the exact thing you hear to other people. And you just, you know, you're not, you're not living it as yourself. You're living it as a, as a machine that regurgitates whatever you get input from, like trash in and trash out. Right. And garbage yeah. in, garbage out. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I feel, see. And you end up feeling more lost than you, than you, where you started. Like, cause you're like, this isn't like, it's, I'm not making any progress in my own life. I don't feel like I know myself better. I feel like, you know, I'm a fraud when I go and talk to somebody and I say, rise, grind and repeat. And I'm like, that isn't really how I feel, you know, like, yeah. but I know everybody says that. And then all of yeah. a sudden you get this dirty, icky feeling inside of you. And, you know, like it, it's, it's funny, like, how, how stupid we are, really. I mean, this has been something that people have known for the entirety of humanity. Like, like why do you think meditation is, is so important? Like, you know, why, why do you think for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, people have always said, you know, you need to think. Like, why do you think mm -hmm. prayer in church is really important? Because you need to think. Like, why do you think, like, why do you think that we've always done all these things? And then all of a sudden, like, it, it was just, it was just some weird cultural thing. No, I mean, we're, we're just, we're just, this is important. Like, it is important to stop and think and connect with yourself. You know, like it's, it's a fundamental human practice. Mm -hmm. If anybody watches this, I would want to know in the comments, what was the last time they were sitting, there was no music, there was no TV, there wasn't their cell phone in their hand, where they sat there for 10 minutes, no distractions. Cause I can tell you, I, I want to be, I want to say, oh yeah, I'm sure I've done that here recently, but you know what? If I don't take the concentrated effort to do it, I mean, I will go days, weeks without doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't happen very often. This is, a, yes. this is how I start every day. Like, I don't care where I am, what I'm doing. Like, uh, I mean, I don't care if I'm traveling. I don't care if I, you know, am in a, in a like different place in my home office or something like that. I mean, I, I, this is how I start every, I can't start my day off without doing this at this point. A lot of people don't want, they don't want that silence to, you know, to have to really be with themselves and fit it. They, they don't know how to handle it. It's, 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 I think it gets shrouded in, in things like church. And I think it gets shrouded in things like religion and things like meditation. And it's confusing. You're like, well, I'm, I, I don't want to go to church to just a thing. You don't have to like God didn't, God gave us all the equipment to talk to God whenever we want to. Like you just have to do it wherever you are, whenever you want to, you know what I mean? Like, I think that it gets overwhelming thinking that like, like, Oh, for me to go pray, I need to be in some spiritual frame of mind. Like you can praying is just talking to yourself. Like, you know, like, I mean, you can do it any day, all day, wherever you want to. So God doesn't um, give a shit. Honestly talking to yourself. 
honestly talking to show uh, hell i pray i i don't even pray when i go to church you just sit there and you listen to somebody drone on and on and you wait for the the, the bell to ring basically <laughs> and get out of there right you know it's like it, you know like I, I find it hard to even think in church because there's just a whole lot of pageantry and shit going on or whatever it may be or something like that like i mean i you just spend 10 minutes thinking like that's all that i'm that's all that i i'm saying you know and, and that's mm-hmm. connecting with god right and that's do that's that's for you uh, wonders compared to all the hours you spend at church but you didn't gain anything out of it because you're just anything. going through the motion you're not thinking yeah you're not using your own brain you're not you're not thinking yourself you're just following along in the bulletin mm-hmm. and then you and that, you live what God you us. live what people expect you to live because you know people say you know suck it up and take it uh, take it like a man well <laughs> What, what does I'm that mean? I'm not saying what's in the bulletin is bad either. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. That's just I think well, there's yeah. Bad. I mean that's that's the thing is people people it's miss, they're missing the point, you know, because you can get um, the same way, but you go to church and you really think about your own thoughts and talk to God about your own thoughts or whatever you want to do. That's fine. But yeah. if you go to church and you fall and you go through the motion. You're not getting anything out of it. Well, what is confession? You know, isn't that sitting there and mm, yep, you're, no you're, confession, you're confession else, is like, not the like, same thing because yeah. confession is you telling someone about something you did, but you don't reflect on whether you did it, whether you are really because like if I did something or I um, did something, did I really um, think it's wrong, right? If people say it's wrong, I, I, I told my, the, the priest that I did it. And he said, well, I absolve you of your sin. Well, I don't, I don't feel anything. I go out there and do it again. The mafia do it all the time. They go to church and say, hey, I killed this guy, you know? And then he comes out and he does it again. <laughs> so so <laughs> what's the point? But I mean, if you think you feel, about it, it makes you feel on better, yourself. Right? Then you like, say, well, that I did is wrong. I'm going to stop. It violated these core values and I need to, and I need to think through that and I need to talk through that in my own head. And I need to understand why that matters to me. You know, like, like that's, I, it, it, this sounds so basic because it is like, I mean, it is literally our most fundamental thing that anybody can do anywhere. Like, like I, I, I just don't do it. And nobody does. I mean, I, I don't want to say nobody does it, but like, I mean, I, I would few. venture to exactly. I would, I would venture to say that that very few enough. people, right. Um, it, not only that, like, you know, it gets even worse, I think, because then we start to think of things like meditation or mindfulness or whatever, right? Those are confusing as hell. Like those are, the, the, you There's feel like you need to go. There's a thousand ways to meditate. <laughs> right. So which exactly. way is correct? <laughs> there is none. The, the only correct way is to connect, correct, connect with yourself in any way, shape or form you want to connect with. But you think of like, like Buddhism or something along those lines, you think of like Taoism or whatever it is, whatever spirituality it is. You think you have to have this elaborate chapel or room or like all these pillows or some space you got to go to with some Zen Buddhist, you know, like mon- you're going to get you know, some sort of enlightenment afterwards. So. Right. All they're doing is just sitting and thinking like just you can do that right now. After this conversation's over, you could sit for 10 minutes and think and write down your thoughts. And, and that's that. Yes. Honestly, and, it, and they would change your life. Hard work. You got to do it. Those thoughts. It needs to be honest. I think that's what a lot of people I think I mean, maybe you're talking to yourself. Person. I mean, what's a, I mean, if you're not yeah, honest with yourself, you, right. you're not getting anything <laughs> out of it. What's the point? Because yeah, people, people, people want to, they want to, they want to be able to live with themselves. They want to. Because I'm not better. asking you if you're talking to yourself, it's, it's for your own benefit. Right. I mean, why you, would you, you're not yourself? responsible for, Hey, yeah, I, I've done this every day. I mean, you do, you don't, I don't care because it's your thing. So right. do it. And do it honestly with yourself. You know, you want to lie to yourself? If you want to do that, that's fine. But, you know, what's the point of lying to yourself? <laughs> right. I, I, think, I think people do it all the time. I think, to, to, I think they, they yeah, want they to do it so they can go to back to work and say, okay, I've done it. Yeah. Uh, for whatever benefit that is, I don't know. But, you know, you're not getting anything out of it. You're not going to change your life by going through the motion. Uh, that's, continue, that's my... continue doing what, what they're currently doing and, and not question it not not think it's wrong not thinking not think they could do it differently or better or it's it's i'm doing what i need to do and it's okay and there's a reason why and 
it's justifying your own actions. No matter what mm -hmm. you do, you just justify your own actions. Yeah, That's because when you're talking to yourself, you're not defending uh, your your actions to someone. Because if I do something, even though I, it's wrong, and I'm talking to someone, I'm going to defend it, regardless. You reasonably we defending a, a position that, to me, is not logical. Because you know, because you, we have that tendency to defend what we did. But when you're talking to yourself, you're not defending anything against anyone. So you're just, you're the just truth come out and say, well, yeah. did I, did, did I, was I, was I a jerk to that person? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can really judge myself truly on that scale versus if, if you accuse me of being a jerk, I say, no, I'm not being a jerk. I have other reasons why. I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I was a jerk because of this or because of that. I'm just making excuse. But when you're talking to yourself, really, well, it's up to you to judge whether that action is your, it aligns with your core values or it aligns with the characteristic you want. If I want to be a nice person, then well, maybe I should have done that. So I'm going to dial down a little bit. And you get a chance to redo it every day when you do that, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, you can, you can make a stupid mistake every day of your life. And this is when I, this kind of goes back to what I was talking about, the whole Salesforce thing of, like, I don't, I don't care anymore what the outcomes are of, of my actions. What I care about is am I doing the actions that reflect what I say that matters to me, right? Like, so, like, as long as I'm doing that, like, you know, and, we, and we're going to talk about this way later on, you know, in other subsequent books. Actually, one of them is called Lying by, by Sam Harris. And that was my reflection was the only person you can lie to is yourself. And another one was the Bhagavad Gita. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's about, it's about, you know, disconnecting from the outcomes of life and everything like that. Just do the work and the actions that reflect back your values and the outcome will be to redo, okay. and the outcome will be okay. Like that's called karma, right? That's called all, all, whatever, all these words that we use to talk about these things. It's just like, a label. It, it all comes from you talking to yourself and figuring out like <laughs> what, 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 what is important to me? And am I doing that? Like, that's, that's really it. Like, I mean, you know, that, that, that's the most basic. Sounds so simple, sounds so simple, but so true. Yeah. Uh, so just kind of wrapping up for today, you know, if anybody's listening out there, um, you know, the question for you is, is when was the last time you spent 10 minutes, you know, with your own thoughts. And, uh, and if you don't do that, like, you know, hopefully this conversation give will it a try. encourage you to give it a try and, 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 and then, you know, as Matthew Kelly and myself learned, it, it can change your life, you know? Yeah. And with that, we'll bid you adieu. We'll see you next time.